Welcome to the Pitt Connection. I'm really excited today to have Tim Jorkinson, the president of the Private Industry Council of Westmoreland Fayette Counties, here today to start out the new Pitt Connection. And Tim, this is great. Uh, we're back uh, on the air. Uh, we're able to start promoting, once again, the Private Industry Council's many, many programs that we have, and uh, real exciting times here again. Yes, it is. Very exciting, uh, John, to be here. Uh, we put together and produced over 60 shows over, I would think, a six-year per six period yeah. of time and uh, just uh, took a little bit of a break there, but now uh, really happy to be back on the air to bring the programming back to Fayette County. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I want to really thank the Fayette County Commissioners, um, the uh, Fayette Chamber of Commerce, the Redstone Foundation for bringing this Fayette TV back to the community so we can share all this important yeah. information and the resources that we bring. Um, can't, you know, really look forward to really? it. I mean, it's really neat to see that what we've done in the past, what you've done in the past for us to bring uh, this information uh, to the community, to show the partnerships we have with employers, uh, the collaborations we have with community agencies, mm -hmm. and, and uh, just the growth that you, we've been able to help with in Fayette County, and it's really exciting to yeah. be back on the air again. And I hope everybody uh, will um, take a look in and see what's going on, and, and hope we'll have a little bit of fun with it, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we'll have a, a, a little bit of different of a format. We're, we'll be able to go out on site uh, on many of these uh, programs. And a big thank you to the Fayette Better Buildings Initiative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make sure we get that right, because yeah. they are a big part of this. Yeah. Uh, the green jobs, green careers that uh, we'll be talking about. And Tim, it's, uh, you mentioned partnerships and, and the Private Industry Council over the many, many years that we've been operating, uh, uh, we have partnered up with many, many different organizations. We, we just don't do it by ourselves. You know, we don't do it in a vacuum. I think we've had much success with uh, uh, having a lot of good, solid programs and training, helping people move into employment. Uh, developing uh, individuals and families through our Early Childhood mm -hmm. Development Division by operating Head Start and Early Head Start. Uh, we were named uh, Center of Excellence in Head Start this, just this past year, uh, one of 10 uh, Head Starts in the country to hold that designation. What a tremendous, Fantastic, tremendous yeah. uh, recognition for, for Fayette County. And I think those are the kind of things we will be able to bring the community through this programming. And it's just really neat to be back on the air again. And I just, uh, you know, want to thank you for all the work that you've done. And, and it's, it, you know, just, just uh, really excited about it. Yeah, and, and Tim, you know, I, I, I appreciate you thanking me, but it has to go back to you, uh, the other st the management staff of the Private Industry Council, for letting us do things like this, yeah. uh, to get these programs out to the public. Uh, maybe a lot of organizations wouldn't look at it that way. Hey, you know, I'm gonna, this guy's going to be spending two, three hours on a TV yeah. program. Maybe you could be doing another work, but uh, for your philosophy and, and the rest of the management thank team, uh, you know, we want to thank you because, uh, you know, Harry Metz, who's behind the camera, enjoys doing stuff like this. I enjoy doing stuff like this, but it helps the organization. We get out programs to people who may have not known that right. the Private Industry Council works in these areas. So right. thank you for uh, letting right. this all happen. And brings, brings the resources to the community. So as you mentioned, I mean, we have this Pathways Out of Poverty, which are green energy jobs, we'll show a lot of that. We have the Fayette County Better Buildings Initiative going on with the relationship we have with, the, with Fayette County and, and trying to help people get into training and, and helping uh, residential homeowners uh, mm -hmm. operate their homes more energy efficient. So it's all going to be exciting stuff. It we'll is. Look forward to it. it is. And, uh, you know, we were coming on here for the first show here in uh, Fayette County, and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on again, uh, and hopefully it's going to be 60 shows you know, more. So uh, enjoy that. We'll come, back, come back and celebrate that. But exactly. like I said, let's have some fun with it. Let's get the resources out to the folks. And make, let make sure that they can take advantage of it, and we'll have fun doing it, okay? Fantastic. And once again, welcome to the new Pick Connection. I'm Mike Kirchel, and you're watching the Pick Connection. Welcome to the Pick Connection. I'm John Evans, and with me today is Brad Geyer. And Brad Geyer is the supervisor for the Better Building Initiative here in Fayette County. And Brad, thanks so much for coming on our show today. Thanks for having me, John. Brad, I'm excited to talk with you because there's been a lot of things happening here in Fayette County about energy. And you're involved in a great program of uh, how people, individuals here, homeowners, 
can save money in their homes on energy uh, costs. And as we all know, prices are going up uh, dramatically. So this is great timing. I'm glad you're uh, so glad you're able to come on the show today. You're going to be talking about uh, BPI audits and how someone can take advantage of these to show them how to save energy in their homes. And and let's start out by what is a BPI audit? Or what, how about we start out what is the program? How they came by it here in Fayette County? And, and how long it's going to last? Sure. The, Depar the Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Energy, opened up some grant money, and uh, Fayette County was awarded $4.1 million uh, in federal monies to reduce energy usage in Fayette County. And uh, the, the goal of the grant is to reduce individual homeowners their energy usage by 15 percent. Wow. And they've opened up uh, money in two forms to help us, people, people to have inspections done of their homes and then to have the improvements done in their homes. And we're looking to help over a thousand people and a thousand homes in Fayette County. Well, that's fantastic. Sure, mm -hmm. and it's a, a great initiative by, by the federal government and it's, gonna st it's starting with, um, Fayette County got awarded the grant and we have uh, three partners to the grant. The county itself, the Fayette County Redevelopment Authority, and the Private Industry Council. And all three entities are playing a different role in this and uh, for our purposes, we'll talk about the Private Industry Council's role, which is the BPI okay. audits. Okay. And uh, we are, we're charged with educating uh, folks in Fayette County to become certified BPI inspectors. Now, the BPI is the Building Performance Institute, and they have a set of guidelines of, uh, of, of how to test homes and structures to see how energy efficient they are. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be taking and training over 60 individuals in the county to have this certification. And it's a real certification. You get a certificate at the end. And um, it's something that right now, companies like Columbia Gas and Allegheny Power have these guys. But we don't have any in the county itself individuals trained this way. And so the Private Industry Council is working on setting up classes and getting people certified to do this training. OK. Uh, these individuals, Brad, uh, when they become certified, as a homeowner, I mean, I, I'm cautious about who comes in and out of my home. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a safeguards uh, in, the, uh, in work in this program? Sure. When you, you, when, you, when, you, when you register here at Fayette County, or uh, excuse me, when you register here at CareerLink uh, to get into the classes to be, uh, to be certified, um, we run some background tests, uh, che uh, checks on you. And after you pass the certification, the Fayette County Redevelopment Authority is going to hold the master list of who's uh, approved through the county, and they're going to do their own sort of testing. So these people that um, we're going to be recommending to send into your home, mm -hmm. well, they're, they're going to have a, a little bit of uh, some checks and balances on them to make sure they're um, legitimate, uh, hardworking people coming in. Great. Now, how does someone go about getting into this program? Are there eligibility requirements? Into the BPI inspection, there are some limited requirements. Uh, if you want to get your testing to be uh, an inspector, you have to have some sort of building background and, and understand construction, um, have some good math and verbal skills. And that's all handled at the CareerLink office. Our case managers with the Pathways Out of Poverty program, they are screening the folks to become BPI auditors and then putting them into uh, the classes that we're setting up. Okay. So if somebody's interested, they should, uh, they contact, should contact the uh, local Fair County Career Link here. Correct. All yeah. right. And so what they're going to do is they're gonna, we have some, some wonderful classes set up for these folks. We're not only training them to be inspectors, but we're training them how to run their own business. Because in the end, we want these people not to just be here while we have the grant, but we mm -hmm. want them to be an overall uh, new business, a new business owner, so they can go out and continue to do these inspections of ho houses to help people uh, reduce their energy costs far after this grant money is dried up. Well, that's a good point, Brad. Uh, I was thinking that myself uh, after the program is maybe completed, these gentlemen will still have uh, a good training background where they can go, like you said, maybe start their own business, their own uh, energy inspection business. Sure. And the, the certification is, uh, is attractive to many employers. If you're in the furnace or insulation fields or if you're an electrician or in the electric fields or even if it is through places like Columbia Gas and mm -hmm. Allegheny Power. So this makes a, it's an attractive resume builder for, for an individual as well. And how long is the training program again on the BPI audit? 
for, uh, for most people, it's going to be uh, several weeks because we're going to take and give you some sales training, some how to run your own business training and computer training in, a, in addition to the week-long BPI certification okay. process. Okay. So this, it's going to be um, uh, three, three weeks or so uh, worth of classes and and those classes are going to be held here in Fayette County, uh, in Uniontown specifically. Okay. Now, I know this is a new program, Brad, uh, coming into Fayette County, but uh, is there a, a um, I guess maybe a guesstimate on how much energy a person could save on their homes after this audit? The grant is telling us that we need to reduce by 15% in any home that we service. So that's the minimum. What the maximum is depends on what we uh, get to do to your home, where wow. your home is deficient. Well, and that's what sounds pretty good. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, that uh, so what's going to happen was when these BPI auditors go into your house, they're going to inspect things, and they're uh, they're going to climb into your attic and they're going to see what kind of insulation mm -hmm. you have there. They're going to be set with with real equipment that are uh, infrared guns to see if you have insulation in your walls. Uh, gas testers to see if your furnace may be leaking gas or, or fuel somehow. Um, they do blower door tests to see if there's air leaks around your windows and around your outlets in, the, in, in your plugs. And, um, and so these guys are going to take and, and go around your home, make sure your, your siding's intact, and, and all of these different tests to see where you may be leaking energy. Uh -huh. And then they're going to take and compile a end report that says these are the things that are deficient. If you do these, you're, this is where you'll, you'll see your savings. Some people, that, that may be a new furnace, so a new water heater. Um, some people, it may be simple things like caulking your windows or putting uh, uh, insulation molding around, uh, you know, around your doors. Mm -hmm. um, and some people, it may be bigger, bigger jobs like uh, redoing your roof or redoing your siding and putting well, a little house. Oh, certainly is an intensive inspection program. Sure, and it's, uh, it takes several hours to do an inspection, and uh, obviously depending on the size of your house, how long, uh, yeah. extra long that would be. Uh, but these guys are going to go in and they're going to do a real thorough and uh, leave no stone unturned. And, and this is good for our homeowners in Fayette County for a couple reasons. One, I mean, the, the obvious factor is you're going to find out where your home's uh, leaking energy, but you're also going to find out some inf information about your home and how yeah. you can make it better. Um, there are going to be big things that you can't do, like change out your own furnace, but there's going to be little things you can do, like, um, like I said, in, uh, recocking a window or putting some uh, insulation filling around, mm -hmm. uh, you know, filling up some holes that in your basement or something. And so. you know, Brad, in the Northeast, all the different types of weather we have, I mean, it could be a fairly new home, but you go through one winter, a harsh winter, and sure. you know, the next winter rolls around, you got cracks, you got leaks, and right. uh, so I mean, it's a great program. Yeah, and uh, so after we get the BPI audit mm -hmm. and the report back, then that BPI auditor is going to send a copy to you as a homeowner. He's going to send a copy to the Fayette County Redevelopment Authority, and then we're going to start matching you up with contractors to get some of the improvements done. Great. Um, there's a couple people involved in that process as well. Uh, we have a sliding scale of income base um, to see who's eligible. So if you are as a homeowner, as right? a homeowner, okay. so in your initial application, we we put you into the program somewhere, and if you're 150 percent or below um, above the poverty level, then you're eligible for full rebates. 150 to 200 percent above the poverty level and you're eligible for rebates and matches by Columbia Gas and Allegheny Power. And then 250 and above are eligible for some rebates and owner contributions. Mm -hmm. So we can really help just about anybody as long as you're a homeowner in Fayette County. Oh, that's fantastic. It's really great to see uh, our partners with uh, Columbia Gas and Allegheny Power joining the bandwagon here it because is nice. really this has taken money out of their pocket yeah. and uh, you know they're they're still charging you by the quick kilowatt hour or by the gallon used um, but they're they're stepping up and they're saying hey we want to see mm -hmm. these homes better oh that's great and it is good to see those companies stepping up like that mm -hmm. it's going to help everybody exactly and that's what the grant gets to do it gets to create jobs on the front end with the BPI auditors it's going to help retain jobs in the back end with the contractors because if we're going to you know, replace a couple hundred furnaces in Fayette County over the next year, well, our furnace companies are going to need some more employees. Our insulation companies may need some more employees. 
And so it's a two-fold effect where we're helping you as the homeowner make your home better, and we're helping other people in creating jobs and, a, um, a, and, and building the infrastructure of Fayette County. Okay, and for our viewers out there, we'll, we will be putting up phone numbers, uh, Brad's title, where you can get a hold of him, how uh, you can get it, uh, into the program, phone numbers here at the crew. So we will have that on the screen. Uh, Brad, anything you wanted to say before we wrap it up here? Uh, sure. One final thought? Or? Yeah, well, uh, one thing is the, the application is, as uh, John just said, we're going to have it on the uh, on the screen there for you to see. It's a real easy application to fill out. And In fact, I, I have it here. Some yeah. of my notes are on the back. It is, uh, <laughs> it is a, a very simple, which I'm glad to see, Brad. I, one I'm page, thinking it's going to be you know, maybe that thick. One page application, even you can fill this out, John. Oh. And <laughs> so uh, if you need any help, give us a call. We'll have it on somebody, the and somebody will uh, can can help you walk you through that. Um, that's how you get this process started, and um, it may take you five minutes to fill that out. It may save you a couple thousand dollars over the next few years, and so it's worth your time, and uh, it'll be worth my time to help you if I can. Fantastic. Once again, thanks so much to Brad Geyer, supervisor for the Fayette County Better Building Initiative. We'll be talking to you right after this commercial break. Hi, I'm Heather. I'm Pam. I'm Diane. I'm Teresa. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the Pick Connection. Connection. You're watching Pick Connection, and right now I'm with Steve Wright and Associates on a homeowner's roof, as you can see. And uh, Steve is going to talk to us about solar panels and how much energy this can save a homeowner, Steve. Uh, very interesting stuff here, but uh, for our viewers, uh, take us through this and uh, how much savings can a homeowner realize uh, with solar panels? Well, the realization of savings is going to vary from system to system. I mean, you can put anywhere from a 1KW system to a 15KW system on the roof. The things that are going to determine that are the size of the roof, the angle of the roof, and the direction of the roof. Um, this system here we're looking at is a 12.67 uh, that's been installed on a home that it's going to end up saving them about half their electric bill. Currently, they're wow. spending about $300 or $600 a month on electric. And uh, this is going to eat up about $300 of that at the current rates. So, How long did it take you to put these panels in, Steve? Well, basically, the, the thing that takes the most time is actually getting these flat jacks down, which is how we seal the roof in. We put what they call a standoff on, and that comes up. It's an inch and a half tube that comes up, and we cover it with a, with a roof boot, which is similar to the roof boots used on the stink pipes that come out protrude through the roof to dry that in to keep it from getting wet. Then we attach the L brackets and the rails, and the panels attach right to those rails. Okay, and these panels will take any type of weather? Yeah, absolutely, and they're designed actually to take a golf ball to 50 miles an hour straight down. Wow, that's pretty adorable, I'd say. Yeah. And so this all anchors it down to the roof, so no chance of the wind coming through and blowing it up. That's correct. It's it, they're designed to handle you know above standard you know wind can uh, rain weather conditions. Now, Steve, so. can any home or any house? get solar panels put on a roof or does it have to be located in a, in a certain direction or what are the uh, uh, clearances for this? Well basically any house can get done if you have to modify the roof or put standing jacks to get the panels facing the proper direction at the right angle it can become cost prohibitive but generally most roofs have at least one surface that can receive solar panels. Okay now as a company do you go out to the homeowners uh, home and do like a little inspection and tell them how many panels they can get? Uh, is it appropriate for the house? Is that what you? That's think? correct. We'll do we'll do an we'll do a, an evaluation. We come out on site, and we go ahead and we we assess the roof itself. We take a look at their electric bill, what their demand is. We size the roof. How many panels can we get on it, um, and what that's going to offset for their bill. And then we sit down and go over with them whether it'll be cost effective for them to pursue this or not. Okay. And Steve, uh, once again, Steve Wright and Associates uh, with me here talking about the solar panels. Steve, you've been doing this for a while now, right? Well, we've been doing it a couple years. Actually, yeah. we started holding hands with a company called Seco Inc. out of Harrisburg, and they've been doing it for a lot of years, and they've got a lot of really good installers. When we first started, we thought it was just stick panels up, connect some wires, and, and turn it on, and we found that not to be the case. So we've really been getting a lot of uh, guidance from them, as a matter okay. of fact. Now, do you have to have a special uh, training for to install in these uh, solar panels? Like, do your workers have to go through a special program? Well, we have a guy who's taking the NABSEV exam. Um, that's a national certification for uh, PV installers. And we have on-site uh, training. We've sent some guys over to Harrisburg, including myself, to train with SECO. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're registered also with the state of Pennsylvania 
as a, as a PV installer okay. through their website. Now all these wires, this all goes, connect, you get all, connect these panels up, goes over to that box, and does that go down into the, the main home? That'll drop into the attic, Okay. because basically uh, the wires are going to be degraded by the sun quicker than anything else on this roof, so we try and keep all the wires out of the sun, and the heat also degrades them, so we drop them into the attic, uh, control attic temperatures with fans and such, and that runs over and drops down into the, uh, we do a meter side tap on this particular project so that the powers drop right back into the, you know. Now as a homeowner, do I have a switch I just flip this on for the solar panel? Well actually the Energy panel will or? stay on. Okay. Whenever the sun's shining, even on a cloudy day, they'll still, still produce to a degree. Um, but you have, uh, there is a disconnect because these things will continue to produce uh, electricity even when the power is out. So when the power company comes to work on the lines, we don't want to backfeed the lines and that's what hurt any yeah. of them. That's why I want to know how that works down yeah. downstairs. <laughs> right, well actually the disconnect will be on the outside of the house so anybody can turn okay. it off. And we're also setting up some training right now through 911 for some of the first responders that should be coming out here in the next few months to explain to them what solar, uh, solar PV energy production means to them and their safety. Okay. Now also the size of the roof, I guess, depends on how many panels you can put up. But is there a number of panels that are required to be make the home efficient? Well, that's, that'll go back to the actual uh, evaluation to determine what the demand of the home is and, and what, you know, what, what the home can actually take. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, once again, Steve Wright Associates, I appreciate you having us come out and uh, get on a work site with you. It's fascinating uh, technology, Steve, and uh, there'll be some more programs with you in the future to, to go over maybe some windmills next time. Look forward to it. Yeah, we've All got right. some going in up in Somerset. All right, Steve Wright, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Kimberly Brown, and you're watching The Pit Connection. Okay, right now we're going to take you to another location over in uh, Fooddale, Mr. Jim Bell's house that Steve Wright uh, previously did, so we're going to go right to the video. Well, this is, this is simply a new main panel that Steve's guys had to put in uh, because the panel that I had out here in the garage previously didn't have enough circuits to handle the, to handle the um, um, additional circuits we had. Okay, up here is the incoming power from the solar system. There's two breakers there because we have two circuits coming down, from one from each row of arrays. Uh, that feeds down into that panel, and we also feed back to this utility-grade meter, which tells us how much power is actually being produced. And uh, that, that information is reported to the state of Pennsylvania for the, remind me of what ESSER? Solar Renewable Energy Credit. Right, okay. Solar Renewable Energy Credit. It's actually reported two ways. One, it comes to this meter, but automa automatically it goes into this Lotus system, which sends it, which is accessible via the internet and is reported via the internet directly to the, the um, agency, okay? If something would happen to our internet connection, then we can come out here take a reading off of this and report it manually. And I guess some people do report it manually. Some people do report it manually. Yeah. They do send out people out to verify it, but yeah, it is reported manually. Yeah. The end phase, the end phase unit up here is an interface that allows me and also the installer to look at the entire system on a panel by panel basis and see what the production is at any given point in time. Uh, basically, it's accessible via the internet from anywhere in the world. Can I interject real quick? Sure. The end phase system is, is set up on, on this particular system because uh, some of the shading issues that we're, we, yeah. were, we were going to have, we used on this particular system a microinverter system. So each panel individually has an inverter that takes the solar power is actually generated with a direct current, a DC current, and it has to be inverted into a utility grade alternating current. Um, what, it, what happens on this project is each panel has its own inverter and it sends utility grade AC power right, right to this box. On another on a other kind of system that's not using microinverters, there would be one, one large inverter right here on the wall which would take DC current from the roof, it would be DC to this point, and then transfer it into AC current and then ship through the system. This is actually receiving an, alt, uh, an AC current, okay. alternating current. The end phase what he's talking about is you can look up on each panel, each individual end phase is serial numbered its own way, so you can look at the production of each individual panel. Mm -hmm. The drawback to the end phase microinverter is the cost. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, however, the microinverters begin producing and shipping electricity sooner than the larger, mm -hmm. the larger inverters. They require more 
uh, output from the panels to actually uh, start up. And uh, in a case where there's partial shading, if you use the large inverter, a shade on one panel could kill the output from the entire array. This way, the shading on one panel only affects that single panel. The rest of them are able to operate at their peak efficiency. So that was it was it was almost a no-brainer as far as I was concerned. And, and honestly, I didn't even realize the capability of being able to monitor the individual panel the panels from a remote location. But it, it's you can actually watch and tell what shadows are causing you problems just simply by doing a playback, which is part of the system. You can see how the energy is produced and when you're starting to lose efficiency. And by mapping that, you can tell where the shadows are coming from. The way we got started in this was, was uh, I got interested in putting wind power in. And Steve, and Steve came out and uh, evaluated the site and didn't think that we had enough sustainable wind to maintain a wind to make it economical. But he did bring out the idea of, of um, uh, solar power. So after a few months of talking back and forth, and we ended up, we ended up agreeing on a, uh, what we have up there now is about a 5.7 kilowatt system, uh, which so far is, as of yesterday, is producing about 70% of what we use here, here at home. Uh, part of our incentive for doing something was last year, we learned, I think everybody did, that the regulation was coming off the electric industry in the state of Pennsylvania. And we were hearing rumors and reports from other states like Maryland and New Jersey that their electric rates were going up by two and three hundred percent. So my wife and I talked it over and decided it was time to maybe look into an alternative source of energy as we approach our retirement age and we could get a little bit better control over what we were going to have to spend for energy. Hello, I'm Tim Yerkeson, the President and CEO of the Private Industry Council, Westmoreland Fayette Incorporated, and you are watching the PIC Connection.